Hello, we're here at the Harvest for the Hungry Garden, and we're going to talk about seeds and transplants. I'm Leah. I'm Kitty. And we're Master Gardeners. Kitty's going to start by telling you a little bit about why to bother with seeds, and then some important preliminaries. So, first of all, let's think about why we try to grow food in the first place. Well, it's better for you, your family, and therefore we're going to talk strictly organic food. Then it is better for the earth. Again, you're going to, everything we talk about is based on organic. The other thing is, when you grow your own food, you know exactly what you get, but when you go to a good nursery, they might have one or two varieties of what you want to plant. But if you get seeds, they might have 30 varieties of what you want to plant. And that can be important depending on your situation. So some things grow well in containers. There might be a smaller size. Some things might grow better at a certain time of year. So how do you find that stuff out? Well, you don't want to spend your whole life looking things up. So you read the seed packet. So, seed packets have lots and lots of info. And the first one is, oh, this tells you right away, this is container kale. So this is gonna be for someone who wants to grow their kale in a container or maybe a raised bed with a small space. So it says, it gives you a description. You don't necessarily wanna swear by the description that's marketing. Here's the real science info. Plant in, and there will be multiple times. I love this seed company because they usually have two different dates for a cold winter climate and a, a warm winter climate. We are considered warm winter uh, most of the time in Sonoma County. So this says plant in, February to May. It says sun or shade. It says put it in full sun. It tells you the planting depth. And then it goes on and tells you how far apart the seeds need to be. And washing seeds up is often a cause for failure or disappointment. And it even tells you how to grow them in pots. The days to germination. So what is germination? I'm gonna show you a little bit about germination. If you have seeds at home and they're a year or two old, you're gonna to wanna to do a germination test. And that tells you what percentage of your seeds are likely to actually sprout and grow. So the way we do this is we take a paper towel and this is flour and water, and I make 10 little spots for my 10 seeds. Why is 10 a convenient number? Because each one of these would be 10%. So if I get four of them growing, that's 40% of my, my um, seeds are germinating. So it's just a paper towel, little dots of flour and water, and seeds. Always label. Then you fold it up, you get it damp, and I did these on the 10th. And did they germinate yet? Well, probably not because they need seven to 10 days to germinate. And so far, no signs of germination. Put it back, roll it up. And you can see that you can have lots and lots of these in a single jar. Don't let them dry out. So that's germination. And then days to harvest. So if I have a transplant, days to harvest is going to be from the moment I put the plant in the ground. If I have a seed, the moment I put the seed in the ground. So the next question that you have to ask yourself is, will I be starting from seed or will I be transplanting? And the question here is, 
um, about the ease of planting the seed, the length of time it takes for that seed to mature, how much space you have, and when you want to harvest, but also things like the impact of insects. So if you have something that insects love to eat, you might want to seed it ahead of time in a, a secured place, or you're gonna have to protect it in the ground. So it's gonna be protected one way or the other from the insects, but easier to transplant, especially tiny seeds, tomatoes, and things that might take up a long time in your soil. Also, soil temperature. So if it's a warm season crop, you are going to want to wait until the soil is warm, not the air is warm. So this is a chart that you'll be able to download and print out from the Master Gardener site. And it will tell you what's recommended, direct seeding or transplant. And that might be what you want to do. It also goes by the, day, the months of the year and the crop that is most appropriate for that time of year. So if I want to direct seed my chard, because it's a nice big seed, the chart will tell me that. And so it's less work. And now we're going to find out about those transplants. So let's talk about containers, because you have a lot of options. If you're on a budget, you can always use egg cartons. And you want to poke holes. These holes are probably too big. These are probably too small. But two small holes in the bottom of the egg carton container uh, would be good. And then you have your own little tray. If you're on a budget, some people also swear by toilet paper rolls. And um, there's an easier way to do it, although sometimes they, you have trouble making them stand up. If you just draw a little line about an inch up, and then make four cuts up to that line, then you can fold the bottom. So there's still a little bit of hole so that water can go through. Those work fine. And then there's the standard six packs. You can use those. For some seedlings, the bigger ones, you're going to want to use a bigger container. And we're going to kind of demonstrate a little of each. A lot of people ask how full should they pack the container. And some people say pack it pretty firm. And some people say, no, it needs to be loose and loamy. I go in the middle. I put some nice damp soil in. You don't want it wet and dripping, but you also don't want it dry. I put in enough to get about a half inch from the top, and then I pack it gently. And then I'm going to put my seeds in, and then I'll probably put a little more loose soil on top. So you don't want it so packed that it's rigid, but um, you also don't want it so loose that the seeds might fall through. So that's that. To prep your seeds, depending on what you're going to be planting, I really like soaking some seeds. For example, I've been soaking some sunflower seeds today so that I could kind of show you how to do that. And I'm going to use the big container for the sunflower seed because it's a big seed. So some people also sterify their seeds, especially if they're peas or beans or big seeds like a sunflower. It just means taking a sharp knife and making a little cut to kind of let the hull loosen and the seed will be able to come up. So I'm going to plant this about my, from here to the tip of my index finger is an inch because I've measured it. And usually if you don't know and it doesn't say on the seed packet, you want to go two to four times the height of the seed. And you also need to know that seeds have a top and a bottom. And from the bottom, the roots come out. If you don't, if you can't tell or if it's really hard to see whether there's a top or bottom, just plant it horizontally. But I'm going to poke my finger in about an inch, the depth of that little uh, line, and then I'm going to gently put the sunflower seed in with the top up, and then I'm just going to very gently close around it and tamp it down a little bit. Now for a sunflower seed, you can water any which way because it's big and it's strong and it's not going to get blown out of the water. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of water and then I'll set that one aside. So we've got sunflower planet. Different seeds require different treatment, though. And now I'm going to show you how to plant a tomato seed, which is a lot smaller. And I also like soaking my tomato seeds. So I take something flat, like a jar lid. I have either a tweezer or, in this case, a toothpick. 
and I pick up one little seed on that toothpick, and it's on the end of the toothpick, and I hold it gently. And then the hole for this, it's such a tiny seed, it's going to be a lot less deep. I'm going to go in about half an inch. Again, the soil is nice and moist. And I don't want to touch the seed because it'll stick to my hand, so I tap it until it falls in. And once it's fallen in, sometimes it takes more tapping than other times, then I'm going to cover it over. And for a tiny seed like this, you really don't want to give it a big spray, a big uh, stream of water. You want to mist. So you want to mist until the seed comes up or germinates. And you just give it a nice misting, and then you can go on to your next seed. So the last seed that I'm going to show you is a kale seed. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to broadcast. So for a small seed like kale, which this is an example of, you want to actually plant several seeds in the same pot, and then I'll show you how in a few weeks, when they're up, maybe three inches high, about like this, you're going to up pot and put them in another container. So again, I'm not packing it super firm, but I'm getting it so that the seed won't fall in. I've read my seed packet, and I know that the planting depth for this gourmet purple moon tail is half an inch. So I'm going to take maybe 20 seeds in the palm of my hand, and I'm going to try to broadcast them pretty evenly using all of the space here. So then I'll go ahead and fill in that top half inch and try to make it as even as possible, packing it in. And this is another one where it's very important to use the mister. You really don't want to blow these seeds out of the water by using something that's a bigger stream. All right, so now we have some kale. Eventually, with light and heat, uh, these will germinate. Some people like to use heat mats. Some people like to use grow lights. Those are all optional. But you do need to keep seeds that you've planted fairly warm, 60 to 70 degrees during the day. No colder than 55 at night is recommended. So whatever you need to do, a lot of people start them indoors, which is fine. When they first start coming up, if you have them indoors, you can, when they're an inch, maybe two inches high, you can harden them off by taking them outdoors if you have time to do this, not everybody does, for an hour a day to start, and then two hours a day, and then three hours a day, and then eventually when they're getting 12 to 14 hours of sunlight a day, they should be about this high, and they're probably ready to transplant or to up pot. So let's not skip the important step of labeling what you just planted, because it's really easy to forget what you have here and where it is. So you can use a lot of different materials for labels. This is a little popsicle stick, fudgical apparently, that was delicious. And here's just an old label that can be recycled. People cut up old blinds. You can use all sorts of things, but don't skip this step. So label the sunflower, put it on the side, and the tomato's already labeled. This is a nice garden pen, but you could probably use a pencil or another pen if you really um, write uh, a lot and uh, press down. And I'm just going to put that this is what kind of kale? Purple moon. And then make sure that you keep your containers damp. So up potting involves taking these seedlings, and I have a little tool which um, is going to double as a label for the seeds, and I'm going to use that tool to just kind of very gently spin out a chunk that should come with one of the little kale plants, and I'm going to try to hold it by the leaves or the roots, not by the stem, because that's kind of a delicate part. And then I'm going to go ahead, in this case, I'm going to up pot it to its own little six pack. I'm going to make kind of a deep hole. Look at that root. That root goes down about an inch and a half. So I'm going to make a deep and wide hole because we don't want the roots going down so much as going out. And this is not that easy, but I'm going to try to spread the roots out as I put it in its hole so that they'll go in all directions instead of straight down. And I'm going to try to plant at the same depth that it was back in its original home. So I'm not going to put it deeper or higher. I'm going to plant and then gently just kind of make sure that I've tucked it in. 
So that's up potting. Now we'll let it grow maybe to about this high in the little six pack, and then we will actually plant in the garden. So to actually plant directly into the garden, once you've raised this to maybe four to six inches high, uh, we do no-till at Master Gardeners. So you really want to dig the smallest possible hole so you don't disturb the soil. And you want it wide as well as deep enough. And again, you're trying to hold it by the leaves. And then those roots, if you can possibly spread them out a little before you bring the soil back in around them, and then you can tamp it down a little. You also, if you have a drip system, you want to plant it near one of the drip emitters. And then once you've got it nice and straight and firm in there, you can give it a little water, trying to water the dirt, not so much the leaves. And you're going to have a beautiful kale in about four weeks. So today we've talked about seeds for direct seeding and seeds for starting transplants, how to read a seed packet, how to do a germination test, and the process of up-potting from any seeds that you plant, and then you're ready to pop it in the garden. So happy growing.